So now we're going to talk about activation energy. And that's going to be the amount of energy that's required for a reaction to proceed. So the higher the activation energy is, the more slowly that reaction is going to happen. So something that can help a reaction that needs a little bit more activation energy would be a catalyst. So in our bodies, we can use enzymes for that. And if I can get to my PowerPoint, um, yeah, I like this graph. So this is showing how a uh, reaction is going to go normally with the black line. And so this is the amount of free energy, and this is the reaction going on, right? So you can see that originally this reaction requires a lot of free energy, right? That's why it's so high up here. Now, if we had that same reaction, but we added an enzyme, all of a sudden you can see that the free energy amount has gone down. So it's a lot easier for this reaction to proceed. That's going to be how um, catalysts and enzymes are going to work. So enzymes are going to be in our bodies, and they are going to drive so many things that we're going to talk about in here. It's going to be amazing. And so enzymes are going to react with what are called substrates. And so I'm going to draw you a little picture to kind of show you um, what I'm talking about with that. All right. So enzymes are going to have a specific shape, right? And so I'm just going to make this one look like this. And there are going to be all sorts of different things floating around that are going to want to try to fit into this enzyme. So we'll say this is the enzyme. And um, you know what? I'm going to actually do these in a different color. These are going to be something that are called substrates. Okay. Um, hello. There we go. Um, so we've got these, this, and that, right? Okay, so those are substrates. Okay, so what's going to happen is an enzyme is going to have a specific substrate it can react with, and that is going to actually click into place. It's going to be mostly shape-based. And so the area here that it's going to actually click into, that's called the active site. Okay, so if we're going to use all of these words, we could say enzymes have substrates that they react with. If the substrate can click into place on the active site, the enzyme can do its job, right? So that's going to be how enzymes are going to work. Okay, so um, there are a lot of different forms that they can take. So you can have multi-enzyme complexes, which means you have a whole bunch of enzymes living together, basically. Um, so let me um, get my little thing up here, and I can show you what I'm talking about. OK, I'm going to clear this out and go back to this color. OK, so let's say that we have this type of enzyme here, and then we've got another one that's like this. And then we have another one here that is like this. That is terrible. Okay. So what's going to happen is let's say that we have a little substrate that's going to come in here. And what's going to happen is it's going to have that perfect shape and it's going to go into here. Now, what comes out could be something that looks like this. Oh, and that's perfect because that can fit into here. And then what comes out again could be something that looks like this and that can go into here, okay? So this is going to be a multi-enzyme complex. Now, why would we want something like that? Well, let's take a look. One is that the rate of the reaction is going to be limited by the frequency with which the enzyme collides with its substrate. So basically, it's going to be more efficient because you can turn it and it can actually, you know, click into the right stuff more easily. It's not going to have a lot of, like, weird stuff trying to get into that place. Um, the second one is because that substrate, the one that was in pink going from one to the other, never really leaves the complex, the possibility of side reactions is going to be eliminated. And what I mean by that is that it's not going to actually, you know, it's going to be more likely it'll go to the next one and to the next one than to shoot off and go and find something else. Um, and then, of course, number three, it's just going to be more energy efficient to do it that way. Okay. So, um, as far as factors that can affect enzyme activity, there are a couple of different things. 
Um, first one is going to be temperature. So um, T with a degree, by the way, is shorthand for temperature. So if you increase the temperature, you're increasing the chance that you can have an enzyme and a substrate click together, right? Because they're moving around more quickly. Um, now, there's going to be an optimum range for each of these enzymes, right? Because don't forget, enzymes are made of proteins. So if they get too hot, they're actually going to denature, right? So they're going to have a specific temperature range that they like to be in. Um, and that makes sense. Like, if you think about it, you've got enzymes in your saliva that we're going to play with uh, at a later date in, in lab. Um, if you think about the temperature in your mouth, that's a little bit different from the temperature in your stomach, right? And so that enzyme might have a different temperature range than the other ones. Um, then pH is going to be another thing that's going to be able to affect an enzyme. Don't forget that enzymes are proteins, and so we talked before about how pH can cause an enzyme to denature, right? So once again, you're going to have specific enzymes that have very specific pHs that they like to work in. And I think I actually have a picture of that for you to take a look at. Um, yeah, so, you know, here's temperature, right? And you can see, like, human enzymes, one of them likes to be in this temperature range. But if we were looking at, like, a bacteria that lives in a hot spring, it might have an enzyme that has a different temperature range because of where it lives. Same thing with pH, right? You've got um, different types of um, enzymes that are going to work in your gut to digest food, and they have different pH ranges that they like to work in. So all these enzymes are going to have different ranges that will make them happy. Now, the other thing that's going to be able to affect an enzyme is going to be inhibitors and activators. And so in the next one, we're going to talk about those.